Hello and welcome back to the Edine mod for Balfour Middle Earth to the Rise of the Witch King expansion. And today we are beginning the look at Imladris, which I think is the faction I gravitated towards the most when it came out. Granted, it was the last faction that did come out, but it, what, that was uh, quite a while ago now. Almost two years, I think. It does feel like it's been a long time. So, a few hints about uh, what Imladris is capable of. They, are, they have the smallest unit sizes for any unit. Um, from starting tier to elites. Um, their ring hero, um, to try and make it sound like a riddle, their ring hero is not their ring hero. Instead, it makes a different ring hero. I've already talked about it in the past, but ju just so um, people know now, um, Elrond, when he clicked originally in BFME, uh, it might be BFME, he died in 3.8. When Elrond was to claim the ring, he would become the new High King of um, the High Elves. However, they changed it so now instead of Elrond becoming an even greater power, um, they give he gives the ring over to the Fellowship and he makes the Fellowship of the Ring. So you got all nine characters in one hero. So let's begin. We are fighting on the Four Linden map against Angmar. And as I also said at the end of the of the Lothlorien video, Imladris is like a puzzle, and everything integrates together. Ready, Let's begin by looking at our starting units, Rivendell Swordsmen. So as you can see, they can get this um, the Forge Blades, Heavy Armor, and Banner Carriers. Then you see they have two different abilities. Stand Fast, which makes gives them more armor, but a little bit slower. Hurry, elves of the wood. But also Advance, which gives them increased damage and movement speed. And you can only activate one of these at a time. And they are both very powerful skills. And looking at our roster, we have a nice uh, roster of heroes. And we do have two other heroes elsewhere. We begin, begin by building the barracks. All our buildings are the same costs. There's not, nothing different there. We're going to get a few Aragian forges. And then we're going to build the building that you must always, always build. The library. And we're going to build ourselves a hobbit farm. So the main thing about the library is, is where you get all your upgrades for your buildings. So for like Gondor, they got it all separately in their different buildings. Rohan, they got the two different uh, forms of upgrade. Um, and Lothlorien, they got all um, all their upgrades progressed um, gradually, or you could get or get them all level three immediately with a an upgrade. Um, here, we have to have to get three different tiers of upgrades, and then we can just set them to attack there. We require three different upgrades until we can upgrade everything to level two. And then another three upgrades upgrade everything to level three. And each of these upgrades, the you can see here the mystical studies, military studies, and the blacksmithing studies. Aim for their hearts. The fighting has begun. Focus down that role master woman. Another thing to notice is Gildor. Not Gildor, um keep forgetting his name, Eristor. It says it right there. Eristor isn't actually a hero that you can summon like he was in the day you die in 3.8. Instead, he is a, a passive, there's, there's an active skill at your citadel where you can you know, send them over to a certain building and either increase resource times. It says it here. The economy structures produce 50% um, more resources for a short time or increase recruitment of units in recruitment structures. Drive back these foul creatures! Then we have these are the first units we can create: the Rivendell Swordsman and the Rivendell Spearman. Once we reach level two, we can get our archers and our blade master. And once we reach level three, for heavy blade, heavy armor, and forge blades, we get the veteran of the last alliance. And this is also the building where we get our banner carriers. And you can also notice they are locked behind level three. Why? Because a, 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 a banner carrier, um, on a small unit that allows them to very quickly respawn while out of combat, is very, very strong. I'm going to get some pantry upgrades. Because our units do cost a lot of command points. This one unit of Rivendell Swordsman costs 500 and has nine, is worth 90 command points. And it says regular infantry, but they are they're basically elite infantry. All of our units are elite. None of our units are trash. Or none of our elven units, anyway. There is one building um, 
at, at the outpost where we can get the Dunedain from. And that's the only way, we, only place where we can get our uh, can get cheaper infantry, and we can cheapen the cost of them by getting the Hobbit farms, which we'll be getting quite a few of. No one here as well. And unlike the Rivendell farms, which gives a, just gives just a decrease to cavalry, we come to protect Middle Earth. It gives the uh, cost reduction to cavalry. Hobbit farms, I, I believe the Hobbit farms are better because we also have a natural garrison of the Hobbits. Granted, they're not strong, so they're going to actually stop a big force. But it's still good enough that you should fear them. And they just stole my money. How dare they? Leave none standing. Keep your wits sharp. Fire. So yeah, just have a look at the playing system. R uh, Rivendell's recruitment buildings gain levels through the res research and development of studies in the library. Units gain special abilities when the studies are researched at the library. So the first three have been, have been on mystical studies, military studies, and blacksmith. They will feel the sting of my arrows. So I can have a quick look at them again. Mystical studies, the scholars. Researched mystical art of Doria allows law masters to use abilities, and these are the law masters which I'll go into soon enough, but not yet. Too early to show them off. Military studies: the scholars research the military arts of the Noldor, enables st uh, st standard units to use a new ability. So that, in so that is the swordsman and the spearman, I believe, and the archers. I don't think that includes the blade masters or the veterans. No. Blacksmithing studies enables battalions to post a regular blade, so we'll get that as well. And get those magic blades, heavy armor, and gold tip arrows. My arrows will fly oh, I just remembered. That's not what that means. What this means is um, there's actually a second tier of upgrades for the Noldor. Instead of just having like a one tier of um, forged blade and one third tier of heavy armor. It actually upgrades a second time to give an additional bonus. I remember that. Oh, it's been, it's been so long since I've played any die. Now, for this last um, base, we might want. So, let's have a look, look at the other buildings we have. We have the Green Pasture, where we can uh, trade the in largest cavalry. I believe there's a second hit, or I may be um, mixing that up with what Arnold can take. And there's also the siege works, which we can build our catapults from. Then the battle towers, resting place, which is our healing and lands. our heroic statue, and then another library. Uh, we're just going to get another Aragian forge, we just, just to decrease the cost of our upgrades. Onward. We want those upgrades as cheap as possible. We get two resource buffs, and again, Aristor's supervision. I don't believe this makes it go quicker. It does. It does just look. So then, the Rivendell Pike Guards perform the Porcupine Formation, which stops stops them in their tracks and does this. Which, when you look at it, is looks rather effect effective. But trust me, even in the most um, useless of occasions, that's still very powerful. And their second ability is just ridiculous. Field Wall, the Pikemen guard. Their fighting, they change their fighting style to use use their shields to protect themselves. They gain 70% armor but lose 30% speed. So this is the other stance. Guard this area. And now they resemble the tower guards. Um, just a quick bit, bit of lore. Where this comes from is actually from Gilgalad. We must protect Middle Earth. Originally, his power. From these lands. Um, one of his powers was to just hide behind his star shield. And I'll give him a massive, massive boost to his defense. Anyway, just so we can get everything to level two, we'll get the this. And let's get this outpost. It's a wild goblin cave. Yeah. Um, most layers that aren't really effective effective against our elves, as they're just efficient in any category. Only the cave trolls and the fire drakes can cause trouble because of how small the units are and how quickly they can and how easily they can just be knocked back or stun locked or just burnt to death. It is very important to notice when you need to defend something. And they're going, again, Black Numenorians already. I'm a bit scared. Oh, and not, not another thing is it's so hard to actually close that gate. They put you into guards mode. So now looking at the powers, I forgot about them already. Horns of the Noldor, the heal. The heal is really good for 
Madras because you have a very small unit. So if you lose one, get it back, and it's like you didn't even lose it. Then you get Elven Wood, which is a bit of armor. And tier two, you've got some Hobbits, so they're still in the game. Breeze of Monway, which many re may remember from Edine 3.8, was originally a Lothlorien power. It's like the Felwind of Angmar, except it's more of just a, a left to right attack. Then, influence of the Evening Star. The light of uh, the Evening Star shines brightly in all its salt, invigorating her and allied nearby herds, granting them faster health regeneration and faster ability cooldowns. Similar to the Light of the Golden Wood, that, um, or the, the Light of the White Lady. But this is focused around um, uh, granting um, everyone passive buffs. Then Luthien Song. The soothing sound of Luthien singing causes nearby enemies to be drowsy, moving slower and slower until they fall asleep and cannot move at all for a short time. And believe me, when Luthien sings, no one can resist her. Even, even Melkor fell asleep hearing her sing. Then we've got Tom Bombadil. Unfortunately, unlike in 3.8, we don't have Goldberry as well, but she was pretty OP. Then we've got the Light of Amman. The light of, holy light of Amman shines brightly about the field, cl uh, clearing darkness, snow and rain, and terrifying nearby enemies. Summon Eagles, again, right here in two Eagles. Then we've got the Flood, that still exists in the game, and it makes sense to be part of Imladris. And then finally, the Last Alliance. A Last Alliance of Elves and Men temporarily summon a high... Uh, Summon of High King Gilgalad, Isildur, Elendo, and Anarian, and army, as unfortunately um, mispronounced, an army of elves and men. And this power is also going to be used in Arnor, which we'll show off very soon. So once one of those guys die, throw them up, and he's back. Put his all into guard mode. I'm going to charge in. A guild of uh, that outpost. While they're occupied. Watch, we don't get a rebuild, so we can't rebuild this, but we can get the def defensive measures. Oh, nice to get that out. Oh no, I messed up. <laughs> I made a boo boo. I did it wrong, no. No, oh, I did it wrong. Oh well. This is still fine, it just means this is where we're going to be building our siege equipment from. Because unlike the other evil nations, Angmar actually has a walled settlement. And it's rather difficult to get rid of without siege equipment. So, yeah. And even though, technically, uh, the Lord Masters are also siege equipment, only one, only one of the four types are. So, yeah. I don't, don't, don't want to be relying completely on them. So build the Battle Tower. We'll build the Siege Works. And we'll build a Green Pasture. Why not? They're killing our hobbits. How dare they? Oh yeah, always make sure once Aristor super, um, supervision is back on, back off cooldown, use it as much as off, much as possible. Now let's start getting some archers. The main weakness of um, Imlogis is in the beginning you don't start with archers. You, you're required to get, you're required to first pay 300 for the barracks, then get three select um, different. Um, pick downs, um, all, each costing 400. But once we get that, we get, get to level 2, and we also get the Blade Masters of Rivendell, which are better against Horde style units because they have an ability which allows them to use, uh, not not use, to perform an AoE attack. And it is really, really good. It is far too good for the top of. As you can see here, even though we don't have a library exactly directly linked to here, we do have the upgrade. And I was right, we do get two different units. The, the Rivendell Lancers and the Glorfindel's Windriders. These are the probably the strongest Elven Cavalry in the game. Oh no, they are the strongest Elven Cavalry in the game. There's only two different factions that have um, Cavalry, and one of them the is Elk Rider units. But what I meant to say was... These are probably one of the strongest cavalry units in the game. Um, the Knights of Dol Amroth and the Royal Guard of Rohan, and maybe even the more well chosen of um, whatever they're called, of Mordor, are close um, second, third, and fourths. Oh, let's get the Linden Watchtower. 
we can heal everyone. You're getting all those axe throws, and they're really good against our. Oh, yeah, we should probably open this gate too. I was, I believe I was talking, uh, about to say something about, um, heroes without, uh, put myself on. Anyway, let's have a look at the first hero, our scout hero, Gildor in Glorian. Experienced scout. Gildor is an ex extremely skilled scout who, uh, can spy easily on his enemies. At level 10, he gains improved versions of all his abilities. So his first ability, scout ahead. A hostile territory will be revealed for 30, uh, 60 seconds. A similar to Galadriel's fast sights, but it's not permanent. But we get to have a nice look at what Angmar's base looks like, and it is pretty scary. Oh, they're killing our elves on mass. I don't like that. Threes of Munway to try and slow them down. An easy way to just um, get the effect as quick as possible is to line up the head, the edge, or circumference of the. I didn't even notice them attacking that. What? What just happened? Oh no, it's gonna be one of those guys. Ugh. Watch for the enemy. One of those again. There, and they've got Barrow Whites. Ugh. Those again. And let's get some cavalry to try and deal with those siege equipment. And no try and get these upgrades. Well, so, first, for these final abilities, Blacksmith's Studies, and name was the Gold Tip Arrows of Oregion. Basic military studies along special unit for elite units, and I believe those are are the um, the blade masters and the wind the wind riders. I don't believe the veterans of the last alliance are in that. Actually, they may be. They may be. I can't remember. I'm also going to try and show off the Duna Dine as well. So we want to get first the Duna Dine outpost. Which, like the border stronghold and the exile camp, does take a while to build. The, out, the basic outposts Away. build immediately. Start building from them immediately. Um, but after the, that, it's just a long slog, really. So then, the ability of the uh, largest riders. Ride them down. The, the Rivendell Lancers automatically deal twice as much flanking damage as other cavalry. Once basic military in uh, studies has been researched, this ability can be activated to give them plus 30% move speed plus and 50% slower travel this efficient. But they are made they are meant to be flanking cavalry and are, and can be very, very fast. In fact, I'm very certain that's the fastest any unit can move in this game. And a unit that's just been yeah, look at that. We just killed off. Oh no, we didn't. Keep charging through these new north. Uh, these um, swordsmen of Calm Doom. I keep again. They're not. They're not actually called Black Numenorians. There weren't any Black Numenorians at the time of Angmar. More, you know. Now these, these shields give a bonus against pikemen and against swordsmen. Granted, it's not against archers. That's something important to note. So coming back to here, we're going to get two more resource upgrades. No source supervision. I keep forgetting how you pronounce his name. I think it's Erister, but I think it might be Eristor as well. It's hard to tell. His name's never really said. And yeah, just one trample just killed almost all of those archers. That's that's a really good charge. Next, so then, this is the Duna Dine outpost. So you get you can start by getting four upgrades. You don't you're not able to recruit from it immediately. Re you require the troop tents for that. But you can get the watchtower, which give makes two buildings. So it gives the um, watchtower on top of the fort, uh, on top of the main tent, and then a tower over here. You get the medical tent, which generates additional resources and heals. Troop tent, which you get, which allows you to make troops and the hero Halberad. Um, before we start going on top of stuff, um, and then storage tent, which gives us more command points. But overall, really good uh, outpost building, very diverse, and gives you your, your early tier units if you really need the bonus. But often, you won't need it. By the time you get to an outpost, 
you've already got a probably just want a, a, either a bigger increase in resources. But actually, no, that's true. You can actually get that from hit as well. It really depends on what you want. I honestly do prefer the Dunedain uh, outpost, just because it gives you that extra those extra bonuses guaranteed. Although, if, if you want to get, get that siege equipment you know, closer to your opponent's base, it's always worth it, considering it. Get the last last of these upgrades, so we can get everything free. And then we can start looking at the law masters as well. We protect the house of Elrond. We must so much showing things off. Let's have a look at the Linden Watchtower. I got it, it got destroyed, but we got it back up again. Find your courage. They're attacking us again. Oh, no. Riders. Where is it? The enemy's and there's the trebuchet. Same quote as the um, Gondorian trebuchet unit, but that's perfectly fine. We weren't expecting any Elven uh, special quotes, but look at that. That is some fine, that's fine craftsmanship there. So then, unlike other nations, we can get an, um, we can get an upgrade to your uh, siege equipment that gives them a like an extra damage bonus. Or in Lodris, you get a rather we different bonus. Come on. My and that bonus is meant to act as a. Just, it's similar to the um, the catapult of Mordor. Oh, I, I wish I read the actual description for it, but the blinding shot is a what is actually just a small like cloud break effect. I'm concerned. I don't believe it's a fear effect, which makes your opponents run away, but it is definitely a. It is definitely an annoying thing to have to deal with if you can't deal with it. We must not waver. Rally together, Lancers. Then we've got reached level three, so we can now get the blob and Oh no, we can't. We need heavy armor and forge blades. I forgot about them. Let's get all of our upgrades now. Let's start supervision. My lady. Was it the banner carriers? As I've said already, they are really uh, any kind of upgrade on its on units the, this small but this strong is really, really, really good. I'm talking about really, really good units. Unlike um, Lothlorien, where we get a unit that can. I was going to say instead of having units that can push from sword to bow. Instead, we have the Linden. Um, oh. We must defend these lands. Move out quickly now. Quickly. Back these foul creatures. We have the elites of Linden. Let's get one of them now. The Linden Guardians. First start elves, high experienced in handling swords and bows. Strength depends on situation, but we are only limited to three of them. So our elite sword, um, our elite sword and um, bow units can only be made in. Maybe made as up to three of them, and after that, that's all we can make of them. Don't let them Let's not go I into their base yet. I want them to get weak, too weak, and that we can't have a real fight. They also notice there's a hero we can get from here, Herdab, the only elf to ever have a beard. That's because he's extremely old, and I believe it's known as living in there third cycle of life, I believe that's what it's um, known as. I may, be, I may be wrong on that, so do feel free to comment if you think I'm wrong. I'm going to use the freezer Monway to slow down those guys. And let's actually get Tom Bombadillo as well while we're at it. So, the only difference between this Tom and the original beer for me to Tom is... Well, as you can see from the portrait, his hair. And he's got a few other abilities. There's the first one we all know and love, Sonic Song. And I don't and although I don't think he says Bombadillo, it's still implied that he's Yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Away, riders! Rally together, Lance! Are they attacking with a Yeah they are. Yes, they, these are the Dunedar. Get into Find them once those have been Infail dealt with. Aristotle. 
Fuck off. Fucking upgrade as well for our units. We protect the house of Elrond. Be alert, Sentry. As you can see, the Lindar, Lindar, the Linden Guardians. I was thinking of them. Um, I have there. received word through the sons see, of Elrond and these. the wandering companies telling of us you are to be commended for your skill and, and they also have an attack formation, which does require the military ad um, advances. Wait, before Tom disappears, let's have a look at his other abilities. Firing presence, they invite allies and heroes, grant, uh, giving them increased damage. And finally, a long step. There you go. That's, that's all that Tom can now do. And that warrants him being a level 3 hero, apparently. So then you'll see they've got nice forged blades. You'll also note we can get Iridium blades. As if, they, as if we didn't already get forged blades. What these do is, the more light and efficient blade causes a higher attack speed. So the whole point of the Regium blades is just meant to uh, give your units or um, sword and board or spear units just so higher, um, uh, yeah just make them better. Be there we go. That's way of explaining it. Makes them better. You always got to make sure you've got everything set up because um, having things like those Oregian Blaze do does actually make a difference. It may not feel like it, but it really does. Anyway, we've now got the Ranger Halvalad. And he is more of an elite um, and Ranger, as you can guess, a Ranger. But he is more of a, um, a leadership hero for your Unidai. So as you can guess, Queen Sword and Bow. And like Faramir, he gets a, a small boost when he's on his sword and not his bow. Right now. Look at that, they didn't even live. And in... Oh yeah, and the Arabian arrows. Um, uh, managed to increase the attack of allied units near the point of impact. So, um, so yeah, that's a, oh I didn't know that happened. So um, if you're if, if you've got units in melee, the bones of arrows actually increase the effectiveness of your other units. Oh. All has been quiet. Lancers, Go back. There was an alarm. So then, how bad? The second ability, leader of the doom die. At level three, nearby unit uh, gain fear resistance damage. Level five, you can post banner carriers, and level seven, you can buy old blades and heavy arrow fire arrows. As you can guess, the Dunedain would not use things Our such as the heavy, pla the heavy plate mail of the elves or the golden tipped arrows. No, you can quite help around to get your upgrades. So if you are going to go you Dunedain, I recommend you do it early so you can we get those upgrades. So next, the uh, Ranger's Mustering Call. Halberd or is a general summoning of must and muster of all remaining Dunedain to meet and arm themselves at the encampment. Dunedain train extremely rapidly for a short time. So that's just a quick um, call to arms effect. Riders. Which is really good. You have a great again, destiny. Dunedain are meant you to be your more cheap units. Elsewhere. And look at the co look how much they cost. Granted that's a 20% de uh, decrease because of the Hobbit farms. But that's still massive. And you've also got the battery ground. So let's get all these Dunedain and show them off. Obviously, you've got your Dunedain Rangers, which we all know and love. But there's also the Spearmen and the Swordsmen, which do cost, um, cost less in um, man points as well, as your, your typical knowledge use. Then, um, Dunedain uh, Ambush. Yeah, I believe uh, Ambuscard? I believe that, will, I believe that is um, German. For a short time, Halbrad is encircled by Dunedain, who shoot at nearby enemies, hit, hit enemies, are damaged, and become slower. So similar to the um, Crater Hero effect, Aragorn but it's not targetable, it's just um, around Alvarad. And finally, his level 10 ability, the Dunedain Arrow Volley. Only available while on bow, Halvarad and nearby allied Dunedain Rangers uh, fire 5% faster and move 20% faster for the duration of the ability. Halvarad can switch weapons. This is meant to be, um, as you can guess, the stronger of all three of the units, the Dunedain Rangers. The strike fast through. You have my facts. Then the people, or the, the, the main reason to defend the hobbits, and that's that's the main reason it's connected to the hobbit farm. 
Over, let's now look at the units. The Dine Swordsmen. They get the sprint ability, which is similar to um, the elves get. Well, not, uh, not our elves, the Lothlorien elves. They can get the, yep, we'll agree with Forged Arrows, which, uh, Forged Blades, sorry, not Forged Arrows. By right, level 7 Halbrad and to be near equips this uh, battalion with Forged Blades. And Banner Carriers requires level 5 Halbrad. But they also have skill. So, uh, so, so yeah, these are, these are, um, kind of a hint to, um, hit back to if you uh, were with Lothlorien. Which I do like, I do like that. How to get these sword masters and these veteran doctors as well. And they get four lore masters to off each and every one of their different versions. So next, the spearmen. Master ambush. When trampled by cavalry or monsters, the Nunai spearmen gain increased damage and speed. Similar to the um, the guard of Fran the Elven King's Guard of Murfwood. Of the Murfwood outpost. We bring spears from then they get stuff as well. And finally, the, the Lunadine Rangers, unexpected salvo, like that's the Rangers of Ilion, get fire arrows and banner carriers, and they are also stealthed. Ready ready. We must hold them all. Add these three in with Gildor, Vidant, the and Halbarad. That was my thought as well. Where are you going to? We come to protect Middle Earth. And the last two units we can make from the barracks. The Blade Masters wield what look like um, I've already got them battle staffs and the Veterans shot. of the Last Alliance, which already come out with their golden armor the enemy and golden um, cloaks. These are their A very good knob knockback again to the Battle of the Last Alliance. The enemy is upon us. Experience of Ages. The Veterans of the Last Alliance can reach level 20. And that's that, that's not a joke. These are literally just the most elite elves in the game. The Linden um, units are come, Linden Guardians are close, but are not as nowhere near as elite as these warriors who have lived since long before War the Last Alliance and have still lived to this day. This also showed in their abilities with stronger as they level up. First one, masterful example. Veterans of the Last Alliance are an inspiration to all free folk and they inspire greater effort from allies around them. Nearby allies gain 50% combat effect experience for 30 seconds. And finally, a middle earth's last def line of defense. This base becomes stronger as the veterans gain experience. At level 1, they gain double damage and at the cost of speed. At level 10, they gain additional 50% armor. And at level 15, they initially become immune to knockback and trampling. And at level 20, they cause triple damage instead of double damage. So, yeah. If you can, if you can ever get a unit of we these veterans to level them. 20, not only are they nearly unkillable, but it's basically having 5 elites. Perhaps there is something the heroes on, on the battlefield at once. It's that is having a unit that strong. That's not, that's not me really over exaggerating. That's, that's me not trying to over over exaggerate. Come together, Trinity. Anyway, these Dunedin, I'm, I'm unfortunately, are gonna have to send in to die. Not the elves, though, but they can get. So looking at the Linda, keep speaking Linda. No, the Nordris Bowman. Their second formation is the third formation. Because they can't be knocked back, but they lose a bit of range. This formation is more um, much better when, again, when you're about to get charged by cavalry, so they can keep shooting. But it's not re recommended while you're defending something like a wall, while in a siege uh, situation. But finally, as we see from the. The Dunedain encampment, the battering ram. Similar to that of the um, Rohiric battering ram, but not much else. And another thing I've been. Um, I, I probably forgot to show this in the Rohan um, video and the Gondor video, but I did remember showing on the Lothlorien video. I've shown them up here as well. The different upgrades you can get on the wall expansions. So you get two little expansions here, which are, I think, just makes. Um, Imlarge is even stronger. The floodgates. So if, for anyone that remembers the floodgates, it's basically three mini uh, flood horses come out and attack, and they do massive damage. Then you got yourself a postern gate. You get yourself mini fountains, which you don't only get from the fortress, you just get them all around. And they heal inside and out, I'm fairly certain. Yep, they're on both sides. The 
final upgrade is the battle tower. Which just looks as glorious as if it was not. I can also get gold tipped arrows. So the, the second cavalry unit, and to be honest, one of my favourite looking units. Loving those wind riders. And you can also get these while playing as Arnor at the second outpost build. The unyielding. The wind riders are formidable. Unyielding warriors in combat and can never be knocked down or thrown off their horses. So, yeah, already, already the point that elk riders to shame. Just preventing them from letting that happen. Ride like the wind. The wind riders urge them mounts to this, um, it, um, urge their mounts on. Acceleration 90% slower when trampling at the cost of 90% of their damage. So you can only use this, or you should only use this if you're trying to trample down units. Because then you if that, that, that way you lose a lot of damage. And then the opposite of that, the legend slayers. Wind riders gain 40% damage and seconds and additional 20% damage against heroes and monsters. But they cannot be well, cannot be used with ride like the wind. When you use that, you just get a nice uh, silver gleam over them. Similar to that as um. Find your courage. Light of the extra hands. We protect the house of Elrond. Spears ready, Lancers. My skill will be seen by all. We must so I haven't shown off the, the there we, we are. So then the firstborn blade masters. Blade masters inflict small area effect damage near their targets. This effect does not affect elite or heroic units or heroes. So if you're ever against large horde armies, like Mordor. Um, sometimes Angmar, and very soon when the Misty Mountains come out, the Misty Mountains, you want to make these on mass. For ever against an, uh, anyone that just likes to spam out cheap units, this is your way to just give them a giant middle finger. Use these Blade Masters. And their over ability, their over ability focused attacks, or focused assault. Uh, 30 seconds of the weapons masters deal increased damage against enemies without heavy armor. So again, just just a way of saying, um, orcs, bye. Yeah, Imloris is probably the strongest faction against orcs. Um, well, it has a unit that is most effective against orcs. I believe no, no, other, no other faction has this kind of uniqueness to them. I think I believe is the right wording. Now let's get the rest of the heroes and have a look at the money for them. And well, that's it. So we got, let's have a look at a hero that actually has the voice lines of um, Dumbledore. Let's just say that again. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. Yep, that is Dumbledore, the original Dumbledore before um, he passed away. Look, um, fortunately, this first ability, nice inspiration. So as you can see, he's got a nice um, silver gleam on his hand because that's because he still wields Naya. It, the, I believe this. Um, I think the main reason for that is because obviously Kurdan had the Naya before he gave it to Gandalf. My fitness is kind of just a way it to give Kurdan a bit more um, uniqueness because otherwise he is just a, a, an, elf, an elf that makes boats. That's it. That's literally all he's been ever since the first age. An elf that makes boats and for that he grew a beard. Riders, His family must be so proud. So then, um, well. I should have known the second ability, Lord of the Havens. The Linden Tower becomes stronger as Kurdan himself gains knowledge. When he's level 3, they gain increased training speed and health. When he reaches level 7, he gains increased training speed again and more health. And when he reaches level 10, he gets even more training speed, more health, more vision, and against the Palantir of Elostilion. For those I don't know what Elostilion is, that is the greatest tower of... or the greatest of the three white towers in the Tower Hills. I just lost all my wind riders to pipe me. Stop that unit. Good luck. Yeah, as you can also see, it gets a nice visual bonus. So originally it was just the, ta the tower, not these four bits here and the statues. Now when he's reached level 3, he gets those. When he hits level 4, I believe there's two more towers that pop up from uh, on the sides. Reaches level 10, he gets an, an, uh, a giant central. Yeah, so it just makes it look even more impressive. And then they can use the Palantir Elostilion, which shows off the entire map. Oh, it used to. Sorry, now this reveals a small area. So it's so there's literally no point to making Kurdan um, for his passive ability, unless you just want to keep spamming out these um, 
Linden Guardian. That's it. That's just the whole purpose of them, of being in the tower, just so you can spam out um, things. But otherwise, if you just want to get a more reveal ability, you can just do that with um, the order. Which I forgot to also mention has the um, Elven Cloak, his song, I'm not going to do because it's rather loud and noxious, and his coup de gras, single shot that deals heavy damage. Once I reach level 10, this uh, reveals, I think, a larger area or reveals for longer. Elven Cloak, I don't think, changes at all. His song becomes um, more effective, makes his enemies slower and or units even faster than what it's. His coup de gras does even more damage than what it um, does originally. So then, back to Kerdan. It's healing aura. For 10 seconds, ally units and heroes near, it, uh, near to Kerdan are slowly healed. That's a really strong power. Again, small units. A small. Um, they're requiring a lot of healing. If you can keep them healed up, they just, um, they just live forever. And that's the whole point. I keep going back to this kind of thing. The Elves of Imladris, um, or the Elite Noldor, are made to. Are, are, are literally the definition of living forever in their abilities, in their powers, in their heroes, everything about them is is just all these things allow your units to live forever and that's the, that's kind of like the giant puzzle box of Imladris. If you can't keep, if you don't keep your units healed up, um, giant hordes can very, uh, very giant hordes, uh, stun lock abilities, things like that, just really ruin small, largest armies because every every army in large is going to be small. All of this right here, all of this is fifteen hundred and sixty. That seems ridiculous, doesn't it? I see. That seems ridiculous looking at it now. And I think Gollum is on this little area here, so we're going to have to get ports. Let's get our lancers all the way back over there to get that port. Um, other than that, of course they rip up more. I'm trying to do something else. How dare you? Where was I? Kurdan, um, healing aura. Very simple. Into the west. Kurdan sends all of those who are wounded to fight on in the west. Thirty seconds. Enemies near Kurdan gain. I have experienced no resources from slain units. So basically, he, he just um, patches them up. He says, How dare you? Just assault our people and just um, stops him just stops him doing anything. So this stops. This, what this mainly does is stops um, not the done landings, because they um, gain resources from destroying buildings, but this stops the scavenger effects of things like e characters like Aima, Burtz. Um, it'll probably stop the scavenger abilities of. Um, the Misty Mountains when they come out, but other than that, that's not very many. And it is a, um, a active, it has to be an activated ability, so it's okay. But I'd probably make it either last longer or have a smaller cooldown. I can't remember how long it is. Oh yeah, this is why um, Elif this, this is what the Elysian Stone, I believe, what used to do back in 3.8. All this was just his power anyway. On this as a Mariner of na and Navigator, Kurdan is able to read the stars. For a short time, the entire map is revealed. But, but note that does not reveal stealthed units. If you wanted to find hidden units, this is not the way to do it. Um, so before we carry on looking at the heroes, let's have a look at these four lore masters. You can see we can get. Uh, when we get them, there's four choices: the lore master of stone, lore master of seas. Lord Master of Light, Lord Master of the Wind. Originally in 3.8, there used to be four. Well, uh, no, no, there used to be three: um, Earth, um, Water, and Fire. But he also used to be a healer. What they've done with this now is instead of having they removed Fire in Forest of Light, and each, um, so Earth is your siege equipment. It was your uh, you. The structure damaging. Yep. We must protect Middle Earth. Light is your single target damage. Stay Water on is your um, slowing. Line it up. Your crowd control. And no, wind is your crowd control. Water is your um, ability removal. Let's get some transports. We're going to have to send Elrond over to the 
this will land on the prow. We're gonna get that. So then, you'll also notice if we do over one law matter to another, they can get they can merge together. Now, there's only two um, law masters can merge together, and this gives them a third ability along with merging their other abilities together. So they have um, so the Earth has disabling tremor. So this is just a um, similar to Glowin's original um, found, uh, shake foundation. It doesn't do much damage to him, if any, because that was too powerful. Blinding flare, the law master calls down a blinding light around him, terrifying nearby units. So that's uh, similar to Vadril's ability. You can do for me on your way. Then uh, rejuvenating water. So again, another heal, restoring some health or friendly nearby units, and it's a nice animation for that. Then breeze of Valinor, the law masters grant friendly units. Breeze of Mo the blessings of Mongway granted them increased speed and not back resistance. Move these lawn masses out of the way. Press on. And obviously, that um, we must protect for each Stay two lawn masters is one different we must protect um, thing. So, so the two I like to choose are the uh, air and earth, Line it up. and water and light are good. Well, we so as you can see, the abilities come together, and they also get a final ability. So. Um, water and light makes the light spectrum, Elves of and Midland. air and Got earth make the sandstorm. So this is what the sandstorm does. Now it basically acts like a tornado. It just sends all units into it, but it doesn't actually damage them. It just throws enemies back, and this can be done on any building, enemy or ally. So you can use this on a recruitment building of your enemy, and you just completely remove their ability to do any any um, anything with them. And you can just have your units kill them off before they can do anything. Plug use it on an allied building to protect it from anything but siege equipment. This does not affect siege equipment, unlike the actual um, tornado. And next, there's the light spectrum, which is my favourite thing. Just look at that. That is beautiful. And what this does is, the crash of spectrum wall it stuns all nearby enemies with amazement. So similar to the blinding lights. But it's just a larger radius and it stuns everything. Where the other one is blinding in fear. And you can obviously get fear resistance. This is a stun and cannot be stopped. Obviously, it's not the best. I honestly recommend getting. If you ever get. If you get. If you get. get uh, Lawn Master um, combinations, it, uh, these are a few you should probably follow. Um, always try and get Earth and uh, Air because that, that's that's immediate value. Uh, air, uh, water and light, however, aren't really that good. Truthfully, I would be happy for the extra hands. They're okay, but I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it if you're trying to. If you've got if you've got four command points, I wouldn't recommend making them. Or one wouldn't, wouldn't recommend putting them together. Or second, Lord Master, there we go. And next, we want. Uh, and water, and these make a, a protective moat. Now protects, and that's the siege equipment uh, protection. Any melee, uh, any melee enemies can't attack it for one minute. That's really strong. That that, 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 that right there is an imme immediate, uh, immediate bonus. So next we have a look at stone and light. So we can have a look at the last of these. Um, Quarries of stone. I advise you to make your way to Rivendell. I'm just going to send these guys in as well, so we can continue to make more law masters. As you can see, our money has just escalated out of control, and I should keep looking for the ring. Doesn't look like it's here, but we should always never assume that something's not there just because we can't see it yet. It could be on this little island here too. That, that's the thing. This, on this kind of map, you have to really look for everything. So then, if I just wanted to, Stand back. yeah. Firstly, that's an AOE knockback, and then you've just got this, which is also an knockback. Not and then you've got the blessing of Valinor, which is a speed bonus. We. Yeah, Earth, 
but Earth, Wind, Wind is a very good combination because it's good against units and it's good against non-units. So it's good against units and buildings. The next, Earth and Light, I don't think I'm very good. Crystal Prism. Prism? Prism. What this does is it does um, target enemy or friendly hero, protecting them from all damage, but also immobilizing them. I believe this was originally a ability of um, one of the two blue wizards from a different mod. It could have been the Udine mod, but it could have also been the R uh, the RJ mod. I do I do forget these things at the time. They really destroy my. Oh, okay. Oh, Ron and Glove. No, we're gonna send you two over because you're you're gonna be the hardest to get upgrade. Uh, not upgrade, but level up. Come on, move out. Stay on guard. So, Line it up. They strike us yeah, we're gonna show off the crystal prison on. Um, we'll show it on uh, Gildor. It's a nice animation, I'll give it that. But to be honest, um, Earth and Light are not a good combination. Just, just, just not good or at all, in my opinion. We must protect the enemy so if you're ever gonna get the Stone Mages, I recommend doing them with the uh, Stone of the sort of Seas or. Uh, air, but don't do them with um, don't do them with light because light doesn't really give them enough of a benefit to warrant using them. The I got the influence of the evening star, so we got more more health regen and ability pull down. I don't know why I made two transports, but I did. Probably destroyed the other one. Yo. That's a port. You wanna destroy my eyes again? I don't care if you do. I promise. All has been quiet. Probably have my heroes focus on killing these units. Just to get upgrades. Well, not not upgrades, but get upgrades. As you can see, the Arwen in her pajamas. Well done. But, but, you, but you also notice she gets different coloured pajamas. Got her, her red ones, she got green ones, her yellow ones. She's got she got, she got lots of different pajamas she can wear. You it just sounds so stupid. You may be needed to really so, so, so funny. You must have shown me real loyalty. Line it up. Anyway, so, um, Gildor, where are you? Your up there. Swiftly. Hurry, elves of Mithlund. Hurry up already. Let's get this done. Move out my heroes. Are in the crawling the ship. The crystal prison. We must not waver. Stop moving. He cannot move and he cannot be dealt damage to. And I don't believe his abilities recharge either. So, that, so that's really just a. Oh no, one of my most important heroes is about to die. I'm going to put him in a crystal prison to protect them. Got two more Lawmasters. We have to. Are we showing off water and light? Let's show off what water and air does. I believe this is definitely one of the better ones. God of Mists. Combined knowledge of seas and the winds creates a shroud of damp mist to hamper enemies and reducing their speed and defense by 25% for a short time. A small radius granted, but both of well, the thing is, both of their attacks are meant to be negative debuffs. Slowing them and weakening them at the same time is really, ri uh, sorry, slowing them and knocking them back is a really good combo for when you're trying to get kill secures on heroes. I believe there's one more. I believe I haven't already done. We must protect Middle Earth. Done. Aaron, we've done stone with all three. We've done water, air. We haven't done air and light. That's it. The wind and light we haven't done. Line it up. Yeah, we Stay haven't done wind and light yet. Mid That's another one of my favourites. I think. I can't remember. Oh yes. Oh, I remember now. This one's really strong. We will defend the Elven lands. For those that do remember him, um, oh, what's it called? Um, I've already forgotten the name. I believe it was um, Sunflare, that's it, Sunflare. For those that remember Sunflare from original BFME 2, uh, this is a nice knock back to you. Yep, Searing Sunlight. Combined knowledge of light and wind creates a powerful beam of sunlight at the target location, blinding and paralyzing nearby enemy units. And it is really strong. It's it's damage as well, I believe. There's a little bit of damage on top of all that. Right, Elrond is the start of his. 
heal anymore. I guess that's the very end. I will be your guide. There was an alarm. The shadow must be stopped. You have my thanks. All has been Why quiet. Why are we here? Your Don't force is my fault. Who's ready? Oh yeah, we'll go. Get up, go back. Resourcefulness. These guys should be in there. No. Get them more to level up. God wants to level up these veterans just so we can go off their power. They really are good. Rally together, Lancers. Follow me. Got these two up to level three, uh, level five already. With haste. And, she, and although you may not notice it now, Alron was we wearing his delay. pajamas as well. I just love calling it that. Oh, obviously, they're not actually wearing pajamas. They're wearing. Um, I don't even know what they were wearing. Just um, light elven cloaks, things like that. I, I don't op actually offer any kind of resistance, but it looks nice. And I've obviously got that nice quote from Arwen, which after a while does get annoying, I will admit. So then, where, where were we? Oh yes, Arwen. So she gets her mouth asphalt off. We may think, wait, wait doesn't Glorfindel get asphalt off? Granted, yes, but this is to um, thinking from the movie's perspective, so technically asphalt off belongs to Arwen. You should be able to pick up their trail. So, um, she also gets Arwen's purity. The purity of Arwen's soul passes to wounded allies and lets them get their wounds. But this is this is the Apollos of, of the um, the Elven Nation. It heals heroes and it also does the um, the nice quote from Arwen saying, "The light of the Even Star does not wax and wane. The mind to give to whom I will." I really, I really do love that quote. It's so nice. The light of the Even Star. The light of the Even Star waxes. Yeah, so this is just Elendil made even more beautiful because of Arwen. Then she's got Noralim Masphalos. Noralim. Arwen uses the uh, urges her horse Asphalos um, on, on with elvish words. For a short time her uh, armor um, doubles and she gains increased speed. However Asphalos cannot ride over any enemies. So this is basically like what she did to evade the Nazgul. That's also ability that uh, Glovendal can get but his just gives him more speed and more armor. And her final ability, the Blessed Banner. The target banner carrier will receive a Blessed Banner woven by Arwen herself. This banner serves as a source of great inspiration to nearby friendly units, giving them passive health regen when out of combat. So, yeah. Again, just more health regen. Originally, the, the faction that had the most health regen was Lothlorien. And that was used a lot in Edain uh, 3.8. All the Elven units had, uh, had Lambas bread. They all had... Um, you had uh, passive healing, things like that. They, they were really good. Perhaps too good. But luckily they uh, uh, tune it down a bit. Next we have the twins, Eladan and Elrond here. I still haven't seen um, Gollum anywhere either, which, is, which does trouble me. It tells me Gollum may not be on this map. As he's really hidden away somewhere. This does this reveal. That just reveals the area. That was my fault That's a problem well. I've, just, I've just realized. We don't have no way of actually finding Gollum. I may have to go without showing off Gollum in this video. And when we do the um, hero, the actual hero review, we'll go over everything then. If, 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 if that's what it's going to have to come to, then so be it. Follow me! I'm sure we'll find him. Still this got plenty of time. So then, look at the twins. I Remember, we've seen the twins back in eyes. the Gondor uh, video with the, Dun with the Dunedain. And this, uh, their first ability, critical hit, is, is exactly the same as it is. Um, uh, I've already forgot what it is. Uh, exactly as they are with, are with Gondor. So the Sons of Elrond are master swordsmen who know how to exploit enemy weaknesses, but they have a 20% chance to deal double damage. But well, they can activate the ability to get a nice little aura, and that chance is increased to 60%. So 
Second ability, Deception. The Sons of Elrond are very skilled at ambushing and surprising enemies and can hide and create a decoy to escape their enemies. For 10 seconds or when struck, the decoy will disappear, causing light damage to surrounding enemies. So it's, it's a passive bomb, really. And ignore these abilities. Those, those are... Um, I don't actually know what those abilities are. Are they actually what their abilities are? Oh, they are. Okay. The path of Eladan and Elro here. Eladan and Elro here. Follow them on the mysterious path of the Grey Company or the Bride Way as Honourable Warriors of Rivendell. Click to activate. Um, I've never actually chosen this ability before, which is quite odd because I have, as I've, as I've said, I've played this faction a lot. I love this faction. I love this faction. I really do. It is my favourite by far. Concentration. I'd love to have a look what that does. Blade Prison. The twins target enemy hero or monster with critical attack. After 10 seconds, the hero or monster will do medium damage and be crippled in seconds. So, um, yeah, the, the twins are basically your hero killers. Also, not your hero killers in a way. That's also merged with Glorfindel. I will be your guide. Move in. Um. There. Finally, their last ability, Master Duelist. The twins have been in countless battles over the ages and can put this to good use against enemy leaders or champions. The target enemy hero will reduce, arm, will reduce armor and damage of units friendly to him for one minute and will suffer double damage from the twins when they attack him. Okay, so, we, so he is the, the hero assassin. They are the hero assassin, I mean. Uh, let's get Flood. No, I probably should have. We all know what Flood does. Now looking at Glorfindel. This first ability, as we all know and love, and the second ability, as we also know and love. However, um, oh, that's different. Oh wait, no, it's not in Blade of Purity that gives it that anymore. It is next ability, Starlight. Wait, what? Um, this is not the Glorfindel I remember. Follow me. In fact, this is a very different glow from them. Wait, what? Okay, just a quick um, thing. When he uses his blade of purity and his star, that is that that starlight base is called Gather Starlight. When the Wind Rider should be linked with the blade of purity because he can't use it. Okay, now I'm just lost. <laughs> I'm actually lost at what's happening. Unless the Dying Mod made a random change, literally yesterday. Or, um, should have returned long a week now. ago, or I just don't know what's happening. The Glove and have different abilities. Starlights. Firstly, it should be called Gather Starlights. Because, um, yeah, weird. Very weird. I'll have to look into that. It might just be this map, to be honest. When we do the hero overview, he might be changed. I don't remember. Uh, let's get the. Hmm. Let's get, the, let's get the outpost so we can show the last of the buildings here. So let's get the resting palace, and that's the last of the buildings. The building is now you have my thanks. There was an I recommend you get out of there. Let's use that ability, and we can get these out very fast. However, this does not affect the battering ram. It only affects the three Dunedain units you have my that you can recruit Perhaps from. Oh, pardon me. The three Dunedain units you can recruit, not the battering ram. We have a new structure. So, so now, so I've been showing off the burning flash of the, cat, uh, the catapult to do, so we'll get that them out shortly. Yeah, this is the resting palace, and what this does is it is a increase the armor and damage. And will heal, and it also reduces the cost of heroes. Let me show you. They attack. That's be somewhere. Olam has to be somewhere. Where is he? Anyway, while we've Line it up. All has got Olam to level or level ten, actually. Please, let's show off the banner of the Blessed Banner. Um, Stay on guard. The banner changed. I can't tell. Uh, I don't think the banner changed. The I think that may have glitched out. But I have traveled there in the past without incident. Things yeah, I think I think there's a few glitches here on this map in Lardris. It seems. The 
Or maybe it's me doing it wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Get this building. And then check over here to find. See if we can find anything. As for us, I believe we also have a duty yeah, to uh, let, Let's go what Glove now has here. So his blade of purity gives him increased damage and armor. Ride the uh, wind rider gives him increased speed and double armor. His starlight it heals and gains increased damage and armor. And space is quite fast. So that's the original starlight. You see, that's even set at level 10. But that's meant to be collect starlight, which is a um, an AOE a build up AOE attack. We must gather our strength. His last ability, Light of Hope. This is this is this is true though. Glockenar becomes illuminated in his wrath, blazing brightly and terrifying all nearby enemy units. So ba so basically, he gets the um, remember the nice little flash um, not on the flash, the light nice little light of uh, lights that came down um, while the BFM the BFM one campaign. So it's basically that. It's just over him and then. But yeah, that that is weird. That's really weird. That's it is not our ability like that to show what we truly are. And Elrond, luckily he's not bugged out. Once we get onto this little area here, little it's here we can show off what he can lances. do. Firstly, we've got a trebuchet to look at. Where'd it go? There it is. So we don't have to upgrade it. We just literally switch it. Push, man. Push. And now. So, look at you soon. But this is what it now does. It's similar to like the um, the original fireworks um, building, not the fireworks building, the firework, um, the Hobbit firework ballista. Well, it's, it, it, it's like the ballista in its design, well, in its looks. Sorry, not its design. There was very, very different in design. Ready, elves. I should have known that you would be here. You have my thanks. Yeah, there you Hopefully, go. I would be get happy for the extra hands. Uh, oh well, wait. Let me show off the unit getting frightened. There go, got some archers. You guys move away and let's Trebuchet do its work. So it shoots. They are now stunned. And it does a lot of damage too. Do not discount the damage. And it also frightens nearby units. Yeah, if, you, if you ever just in a situation where you need um, fire control, you've got this. If you don't have the, well, the, the Lawn Masters at least. Now finally, we look at our ring hero before he gets the ring. Although again, the ring does no difference to him this time. In this campaign, oh no, this campaign, <laughs> in this uh, mod, the ring does nothing to Elrond. The first we've got the rage of the loud water. Elrond uses Velia to raise the waters of the of the ruin end in defense of his people, summoning a powerful flood in the form of a mighty horse to crush enemies. Target area. As he levels up, he gets an additional flood horse of maximum of five. Every time he levels up, um, up to or two parts and then to level 10. But at level 6, he would have three horses. Yay! And then he can get up to a maximum of five, of course. Increase the area effect ability. Well, the more you get. Next, he's got a mount. Wait, did he always have a mount? I'm actually forgetting now. Did Elrond actually have a mount? I feel like he did. Oh, yeah, because this is the, um, the Hobbit style Elrond. Because it. That, as, as it links to his third ability, ancient equipment. Elrond draws his old sword had uh, fang and puts on his uh, battle armor. Permanently gains increased armor and inflicts AOE damage. And units in the vicinity get increased armor, so it's leadership ability, armor ability, and makes his attacks AOE. Already, Elrond is a lot stronger than what he was in the base game. Then his restoration, which everyone knows, doesn't affect Elrond, everyone around him. Gets a slight heal and their abilities in, um, instantly um, recharge. And finally, Vilya's Wrath. Use the Ring of Air Vilya to summon a raging whirlwind around him, which causes heavy damage. And the what this used to do in Edine 3.8 is his tornado would become like that of Galadriel's as it is in, the, in this version of Edine. 
it would get, also give his, um, his um, Rage of the Loud Water, he gave it like two more horses, I think. It up to a total set. So it's basically, every time he uses his ability, it turns a flood. I'm talking about flood less job, but it does. Oh, yeah. It doesn't even damage buildings anymore because it was too strong. Oh, yeah. Swiftly. Why are we here? That's a good question, Kernan. Why are we here? We must gather our strength. Why do you linger here? The only thing I really want to show off, or wish I could show off, firstly is um, Olam. But well, I've literally seen nothing of Olam this entire game, and that troubles me because I feel like this is one of those maps that he actually glitches out of, or I'm just missing him. So we're going to send our lancers around. I sent obviously select our heroes separately. Everything away. You to make your way and then all the heroes I haven't reached uh, their final strength yet. They're, um, on tier one. Group one, and the start searching for Gollum. Start searching for Gollum everywhere. As our heroes level up. Even even I don't want to drop everything they can do yet. I do want to try and find Gollum. I, I, want, I want to really show off what the fellowship looks like. Move out. This way, Lancers. Yeah. It, Gollum could be literally be anywhere on this map, and I wouldn't even know it. If it was too late. You have my Cabrera is dying, and the rest of my heroes are not even going to help him. Oh, uh, you're like you're, you're the Faramir of this faction, aren't you, Halberd? You, you are the Faramir. Name, but I have traveled there in the past without incident. It will take time. Maybe I should concentrate. Security. And... It does wide. And it even does good damage against units as well, which is what makes it really strong. There was an alarm. Yep. There's the... the dying ambush. Any sighting of... sighting of Gollum yet? I'm, I'm no, I'll know when he's been noticed, because say, enemy stealth unit revealed at the very top. That's what, it, that's what it means when I'm Gollum. Why are oh, we? Oh, yeah, because it's level 10. Be on your guard. Away. Go back Please. and meet with Armin so you can heal. Let us say the light of the Unistar doesn't wax and wane. Yeah. It is mine to give to whom I will. Onward. And then they'll heal you up nice and happily. Ride. Happily? Happily. Onward. This way, Lancers. Onward. I, I, I feel like the more I keep looking, I think I have a better idea of where it's going to be. It's going to be here, isn't it? Oh, and now we've reached level 7 with Kurdan, so we can see the upgrades. We've got two more towers, and this building here looks a bit more prominent, although that might just be because of the extra two towers. And yep, they are everywhere. Looking beautiful, aren't they? You have my thanks. Oh, uh, wait. Well. There was an alarm. Go close to go 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 uh, go close to Halbrand and whisper in here. There we go. It's not much of a heal, but it's still a heal. It is mine to give to. I will rid them from these lands. Go back into fight and kill and stuff. Also, I want to end this by getting the um, last alliance power. I don't know why I, I don't know why I chose that over the. You have my facts. Um, I didn't choose it over the flood power, but I did. I kind of regret it now. Quickly now, quickly. Put the coup de gras on. Auto cast, just so you can see him use it at least. Oh yeah, it has to be used on a hero. I forgot. I probably never see coup de gras because for some reason Angmar doesn't know how to use their heroes. And the sad thing is, Ang uh, one of the main strengths now. of Angmar is their heroes. What makes it even sadder? Where are you, Gollum? I will find you. You can't hide from me forever. I should have glitched off the map, in which case you can. The enemy seems to have turned away from Shire. I'll find you. I'm gonna find you. There, found you. Oh no, good or die, I don't, I don't really care. Just found the ring to Get you another dinner. Get Aron over there. Why are we here? The rest of those units in. Oh. 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 
For some reason, we've got the Pippin quote on the Julian Lodris, even though we fight off Lorien, we shouldn't. Anyway, as you can see, we've now got the Fellowship. And we've got all nine of them together. And this is the Fellowship of the Ring forms, of course, so Frodo's got his Mithril Mail on, probably. Gandalf's his Grey form, Aragorn's his Strider form, Boromir's not got his armour. So Gimli and Legolas look like what they do in Helm's Deep. And all of their quotes are just a mixture. Sometimes you get Gandalf, you hear Aragorn, you, you, you just hear all of them randomly, which makes them even, which is a nice combination. We commend it for your skill. Now, another thing to note, all of them are in melee stats. But let's have a look at all their powers first. Fetish for the ring. The Fetish for the ring defend the ring bearer with their lives. When a member of the Fetish is slain, he will be revived after some time. But when the Fetish dies, the ring will be dropped. So you cannot let all of them die. The first power that starts off immediately is Light of Elendil, which you can only play when Frodo is alive. It draws forth the Light of Elendil from his special glass, terrifying it by enemies and causing them to flee. So it is coming from Frodo directly, not from anyone else. Then for Frodo, the Fellowship fights bravely for the Ring Bearer. For a short time, they gain speed, and it can be done with anyone's around. But obviously, it's got going to have it's got positive. It's going to have sound for Frodo. Then you've got weapon. The Fellowship throws their secondary weapon. Gandalf is a pine cone. Aragorn and Boromir are their knives. Legolas a double arrow or fork strike. Gimli is his throwing axe, and the Hobbits throw stones. And then there's some even more stuff. Horn of Gondor, which provides Gond the Boromir to be alive and the level 3. Level 5, an Aragorn, you can get Athelus, which heals all of the wounds of the Fellowship. Only the Fellowship will have had. Elven Eye, level 7, requires Legolas. The one in the Fellowship of threats, they get increased sight range and the reveal hidden units. And then finally, Word of Power, reveals 10, uh, requires Gandalf, and it's just a Word of Power. So it's, a, it's the, the strengths of each and every one of the members of the Fellowship put together into a neat little bow. And it is so, so strong. Imagine Word of Power. Elrond. Word of Power. And then you've got Arwen's heal. You've got Glockendall's Starlight, that's currently bought. Uh, you've got Herdan's heal. You've got Elrond's heal with Restoration. You, you just don't lose. But it seems to if you find the ring, nothing. yes, the fellowship starts at level one, and they're they're okay, but then they don't have everything, and it takes a long time to level them up. They don't obviously the word of power. But if you ever get into a, a, a place where you can get the fellowship to level ten, first give yourself a round of applause because you've deserved it, and two, you just don't lose because the double word of power, and then the, things like horn of Gondor, the heal, it's ridiculous. As you can see. Imladris, I probably had the, the easiest time playing as this faction compared to any other. Maybe because Angmar doesn't do well um, when held by an easy AI, which makes sense because it is meant to be an easy AI. But again, this was for the overview, so it wasn't meant to be a co anything competitive. It wasn't trying to tell you how best to play the faction. It's just showing everything of the faction. I think I did that pretty well. So that is the last of the... Well, no, no, it's not. The dwarves are next, and I'll be doing each of these um, through. I'll be doing each one of them. Uh, firstly, I'll be playing as Erebor, then I'll be playing as the Iron Hills, and the last one, my favourite, Erin Lewin. We're we'll playing them on Mon uh, tomorrow, Monday. Erebor on Wednesday will be the Iron Hills, and Friday will be Erin Lewin. And I want to try and get some more dividing conquering as well, because we just took the entirety of the Shire in one video and I want to carry on with that because that's getting fun. So again, for the dwarves, I would have got uh, gone against the Orcs and Misty Mountains, but they don't exist yet, so um, we'll probably go against uh, one of these each. Erebor, I think, would make sense to go against Mordor. Iron Hills will go against Isengard, I guess, and the Blue Mountains will go against Angmar. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to click the bell so you can hear um, whenever I get a new video uploaded. Um, comment if you want to see um, anything else I have I may have missed, and I will be doing, um, as I said already, once we've completed all of these and the Arnor campaign, I will be going uh, through each of the lists of the heroes, each at level 10, and showing off 
of their strengths in legendary hero mode. So then, I will see you all next time. Farewell.